Father, we thank you once again in Jesus' name for this day that you have made. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for Holy Spirit, which is our teacher and our guide. It will guide us into all truth, knowledge, and wisdom and understanding that we as your people shall hear the word of God concerning our destiny. God, we... We realize now that we are important to you, but most of all, we are important to ourselves. So, Father, we come to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. All the blessed people of God, come on, you clap your hands, all you people, and rejoice with a voice of triumph. Triumph means that you have the victory. Amen. Hallelujah. The text this morning will be coming out of Romans chapter number 8. Beginning in verse 28 going down to verse 30. Romans chapter number 8. Verse 28. And going down to verse 30. The Bible declares, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance or the beginning, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son should be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him, and having called them, he gave them the right standing with himself. And, have, and having given them the right standing, he gave them his glory. Then Ephesians uh, chapter number five, I mean, correction, chapter number one, verse five, I want to, I want to use two. Because here it is, you have Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. And, and verse five says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Now, if you look at it from a different translation, it's going to say he bought because he foreknew us, he adopted us. So adopt, when adoption, to, what God is saying, I knew that your mom and daddy were going to have you, but I'm adopting you into my family that's going to supersede that family. Okay, that'll hit you by Thursday, but you'll be all right. And I wanted to do for a subject this morning, as we talked about being predestined, if you want to go back to the original translation of King James, New King James, it uses the word predestined. And by us being predestined, it doesn't matter how far you go off, my subject is, I have to come back. 
works. Because when you were adopted by God, it did not leave you out there by yourself. Is that here it is, you know, like it's like parents. I'm okay, I'm still your mom, I'm still your daddy, but if you want to go trip for a while, go on and trip, but you're gonna have to come back. See what happens is that we fail to realize is that when the scripture tells us to train up a child in the way they should go, and when they old they will not depart. God says, Now I know your mama trained you, but I'm training you too. He says, you can go far away from me if you want to, because guess what? When you old, that old also, what God gave me revelation on, is maturity. He says, when you really mature, you're going to have to come back to me. Because you're going to feel so left out, so apart from him, and you're going to realize the word going to say, apart from God, I can't do nothing. When I looked up the word predestined, it means to destine in advance foreordained, predetermined at the beginning of. So here it is, God preordained us before we got here. Now the reason why that a lot of people have not experienced the greatness of God is because when you were born by your mama, you have not decided to be born again. See, see, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, watch this. I, I'm going to help everybody with, with, with the cliche that we use is that, well, Pastor, I'm not there yet. I'm trying. Come on, holler at your boy. But what I found out is that we still make those declarations because I'm beginning to question, have you been born again? See, I know that you were born into that situation, into that situation, and, and you and you hang around that situation. But God says when you get born again in me, those situations go away. Because I'm going to give you the word of God to get rid of that stuff. And he says that now when you become truly born again, you're not a church hopper, not a church goer or worship goer, is that I'm born again in him. So when you're born again in him, guess what? He becomes the raising panel. Why? Because he has to raise me because he predestined me. And since he predestined me, I have to learn his way in doing things. Ah, uh, y'all ain't going to try to help me. So guess what? If, if, if they trip, just realize I've raised them right, they got to come back. So guess what? Don't hang up late at night no more. Get rid of the word and say, you know what? You already been predestined. From the foundation of the world, God says, when you came into this world, he had an assignment for you. He says, the only way that you're going to understand your assignment, you've got to be born again so you can get instruction. You cannot get instruction on how you're supposed to live for God outside of God. See, what happens, you've got to understand, is that... Uh, When you start looking at, how do you know how to put, pick a good apple from a bunch of apples? Do you know what it looks like? Do, 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 do you know the feel of it? But the only way that you know how to pick a good apple, you have to be around some good ones. Okay, that'll hit you by Thursday. I'm going to take the slow world around. Watch this now. That when you move... And if your apple don't feel, if their apple don't feel like your apple, because a bad one bad apple can spoil a good one. All you gotta do is stay around it long enough. See, but you've been predestined to be around great stuff. If you don't believe me, take a take a bad apple and put it in the same bowl with a whole bunch of good apples and watch those apples turn bad. Why? Because it's based upon connection. God did not predestine us for bad connection. See, because you got to realize when you've been predestined, that means you've been chosen. Abraham was chosen. Jacob was chosen. The nation of Israel was chosen. You've been chosen. So since you've been chosen, or since we've been chosen, repeat this, say, I, I, have, I have been chosen, been chosen by, God by God when... I return, I return my life back to him. Life back to him. So with that being said, 
So with that being said, I don't have the right. I don't have the right to do what I want. To do what I want. Because God's chosen has an order. You have instruction. And anytime you get out of the order of God and you've been you keep listening to preaching week in and week out, and we still decide to do our own thing, I'm beginning to wonder, do you know what it means to be predestined? And what I've learned is that when we do our own thing, even without having a conscience behind it, you may not be born again. Because even if you take a baby long enough and you keep telling the baby, don't touch that stove, it's hot. After a while, you don't have you don't have to keep saying it. The baby can look past the stove and say, "Yeah, it, it, it may be hot, even if the stove not on." But they have a visual because we, they kept being reminded of the stove is hot. So, in other words, they know that stove now can be dangerous to me. Ah, oh, Jesus. So, watch this. It, 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 it's nice to know that someone has your back. It's comforting to know that someone has your side. It helps to know that someone is there for us. And Paul is talking about God this way. He, he, he's saying, God, Paul is saying, look, he got me. He predestined me. He got my back. See, we have to graduate from worrying about man having our back and start realizing that God has our back. See, because you look for so much validation in man, you forget about God. Come on, holler at your boy. Because the validation comes based upon how many likes and shares and, and all that kind of stuff you get, but God ain't in it. Gotta get my followers up. Well, who's following you to the body of Christ? Because we've been predestined to lead people to God. And guess what? Since we've been predestined, since we've gotten into God, we should be leaving the non-believers to God. Or even those who've gone astray from God at least have enough in us to bring them back to God. But what happens, we have to have a life that's pleasing to God and to them that are watching to even follow you. The old saints say, let's show me your fruit. Watch this. So, so, so this thing, verse 28, is about, you know, that all things work out for the good of them who are called according to it. His purpose. How many of y'all have purpose? Because what happens, watch this now, for those who feel like things are not working out for your good, check your purpose. Because your purpose is in Him, not them. We have so much purpose in others, but not in the kingdom. Who are called, I'm called according to His purpose. So what happens when I'm called according to his purpose, my purpose no longer matters. Because I've been predestined from the foundation of the world for my purpose. And see, that's why we got to get out of the mindset that, well, you know, they just kids, you know, we got to let them find their way. No, that ain't their purpose. Well, you know, they got to have a voice. Yeah, it's called the voice of Jesus. And the only voice they're going to have, or they should have, is what did he say? And, and what happens is that we have, to start, we have to stop raising kids out of fear. You can no longer raise your kids based upon what you didn't do for them back then, and we're in a new era now. They need to thank God that at least you're present now. 
Lord Jesus and you don't do it right now. <laughs> because the thing is that because when you start teaching them that way, but the thing is, before you can teach, you gotta follow. Morris caught with his talk. If you can't follow the man of God, why should they follow you at home? Amen. Cops dropped. I saw how light them claps got right there, but it's all right. No, because the thing is, you got to understand, when we learn that we've been predestined for success, there's no failure in the kingdom. Even if something is delayed, there's no failure. Hmm. See, see, what happens is that people have to start learning, understanding you based upon when they see that you've been predestined, they're like, how in the world are they still worshiping God after coming out of, this, uh, out of a dis disastrous situation? Because I've been predestined. And what happens in your predestiny, in your predestiny, mm -hmm. you don't think it's worth but I'm going to use it today for preaching purposes. Is that where... When you get to that point, when God says God has predestined you for your destiny, is that you don't look at what it looked like then. You look at where you're going. And what happens is that too many people are looking at what it looked like then instead of where you're going. And now you begin to start lacking, lacking vision. Which now brings a clouded judgment. See, and, and that's why I talk about it, it's all right to take pictures of where you have been. But where are the photos of where you trying to go? See, what happens is that sometimes you got to put up in your house some photos where you trying to go. So when people come to you, I'm like, you've been there? Nope, but I'm going though. You know, we call it the bucket list. See, but some people are so stuck up on the past, you can't see your destiny. And what happens, you don't keep you, you don't need to keep things reminding you of. And God says, forget those things of which are behind. So that means yesterday should be behind. You should not be bringing tomorrow into today. <laughs> That's how freedom comes. You don't bring tomorrow into the day because it's behind. It's called the past. You can only work on what's in the present to set up your future. Well, today is the future. Well, matter of fact, uh, it's 1046. 1047 is your future. And we keep focusing on what happened then, but you know, this happened. That, that's not your destiny. Some things happen that God wanted you to see so, so you could finally let it go so you can get to your destiny. Amen. You, you don't have time to keep be dragging stuff along. It's not designed to go where you're going. Okay, watch it. So, you even learn how to rejoice in your suffering for destiny. Romans 5, 3, and 4. Not only so, but, but we also rejoice in ourselves because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. So guess what? You are predestined to have good character. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Even when you look like your character is jacked up, I'm, pre I'm predestined to have a good one. I know my word don't mean nothing, but I'm predestined to have a good word sooner or later. People don't even believe what I say no more, but guess what, Joe? But I'm predestined to have a good character. Because what happens is that when you're predestined to have good, people are watching to see it to turn in the opposite direction to go the right way. Never do a 360. Do a 180. Because a 360 puts you right back in the place where you've come from. A 180 gets you going in a different direction to get away from that where you're going that's not even pleasing to God. We have to change the way. Yeah, I did a whole 360, but that's not good. All you telling me is you went right back to the square root of one, and that's why we still getting the same results. But you are not, and you've been predestined to be better. 
Okay, let, 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 let me help you with something. When you wake up in the morning, you should be like, God, what is my destiny? I've already been predestined. I need your wisdom to show me how to get to the place you said has been designed for me. See, and, and what happens is that we got to learn how to work the word. And because if Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for God knows the plans that he has for you. That don't mean I'm going to know the plan God has for you. Because you have to have a relationship with God to understand your plan. See, what happened is that when you came into the world and God says, okay, I really need you to do this for me in the kingdom, kingdom of God. So let me write the blueprint. And then when you got saved, born again, God handed you the blueprint. Some people just don't know how to read it. Because you haven't studied the blueprint. The blueprint is how Jesus does things. Or, or, or the examples he left behind for us to follow. So that's why he's saying, yeah, I know you're going to trip. But you got to come back to me. Amen? Watch this. Shout, my destiny is right before me. See, we got to say things till you really believe it. Not just because I said it. Okay. See, because what happened, watch this, let me help you graduate, let me graduate you right now. Because you've listened to a lot of other things that people have had you repeat and they had to do with God. And you believe it. You know how you go to work sometime and y'all had these two, these team meetings before you go shift start and your supervisor say, come on, all right, repeat after me. <laughs> We will be successful today. And you repeat it. And soon you leave that meeting, everything fall apart. But you believed it when you left that meeting. God said, you ain't talking to me like that. Now watch this. When Paul uses the word if, Paul is not questioning. He's not questioning. He's not asking a question. He's stating a fact. It you could say, since God is for us, if God went so far as to release his beloved son to our, into the world for us, so we would have the ability to be saved, then what more could be done to prove his love for us? Nothing. He gave his only begotten. In other words, he gave all. Somebody shout all. Uh. What's left out of all? Nothing. Okay, watch this. Now, since God gave his all, his only begotten, he only asked us for a tip. He ain't asking for all. Okay, all right, praise the Lord. Don't, don't check out on me now. Watch this. You've been predestined to give him the tip. That's why you work. Or you have some type of income. See, what happens is that what I... Uh, those of us my wife and I, we have been predestined to be sowers. Y'all missed that. Because the scripture says he gives seed to the sower. So what happens, we've been predestined to sow because of our faithfulness in sowing. So it's almost more that comes through us and he allows more to come into us because we are conduit. As it comes in, it goes out. So you've been, watch this, you've been predestined to love the unlovable. <laughs> I'm like three of y'all. 
But I'm trying to tell you what God we, we predestined us for because what happens when He predestined us, He was giving us Him. Because He knew how to love the unlovable. He had no problem sowing, He had no problem overcoming, He had no problem walking in faith. You were predestined to prosper in the kingdom. There's no lack in the kingdom. If you're lacking, there's something that you may be off with a little bit. So when you're off, you've got to say, okay, I've been predestined to live a different way. Why am I off? He'll show you. Holy Spirit will show you, hey, this is how you get it right. Don't run from it. Correct it. See, the thing is, don't run from the correction of God. That's a sign of his love for you. Amen. That's right. And what happens is that this is what happens. So much shame sets in and we forget what God called us to. And we put the shame on us because he didn't. I'm just trying to help you. Watch this. So, so when you're talking about giving your own, Abraham was sacrificing Isaac. He was commanded to, but God willingly gave his son. Jesus willingly gave his only son. See, what happens is that you have to be willing to release to receive. See, see, watch it. it, 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 it you know, he, they went up to the mountain and God told him to go, you know, kill his son. What, kill my son? Yeah, go, go take him up to the hill and kill him. And he trusted God so much. Come on, boy, you're going to die. And, they, and the son trusting God so much, he goes with him to die. God said, boy, you since you trust me too much, don't kill him. But because of your faith, you was willing to receive, release to receive. And see what happens, and, and, and I'm not talking about this tangible stuff. I'm willing to release hatred to receive pleasure. I'm willing to release my praise to receive his glory. See, you got to be willing to release to receive. You don't come to worship to sit there and look all stuck up like everything bothering you. When you come in here, it ain't based upon what somebody else is going through. You come here to work on your own issue. Because the thing is, you know, you know, it's sometimes that people always can see what everybody else is doing in church. And they can't see what they do. If you stop focusing on them and focus on what you're supposed to be doing, you won't see what they're doing because you ain't here for them. You're here for you. I've been predestined to come get the word for myself. Not to focus in on what everybody else is doing. That's called a distraction. And say, like, look, look at them, look at them, look at them. That's Satan talking to you. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing something said. That's Satan. <laughs> You, you want me to be something, something told me no. That's Satan told me to look over there. And you didn't have enough word to combat what Satan was saying to you. So you messed up your destiny because you're giving attention to something that God never told you to focus on. And you leave here still discombobulated by the time you leave here. And the next thing you know, you say, what did I go in there for today? Because you wasted your time because you didn't come here with destiny on your mind. You came here with problem on your mind. When you come to worship with problem on your mind, that's what you focus in on when you come to worship. But when I come with destiny on my mind, I don't care nothing about your problem, your problem, your problem. I come to get what I'm destined for. Watch this. Watch this. 
and, and, and when we understand that, that the all-powerful God, the all-knowing God, the ever-present God is for us and He is on the interior of us, you're going to find destiny. And I was thinking about, about that name, Destiny. Uh, Brother Stanford is on his uh, name is Destiny. That's why I'm thinking about Destiny. Foreknew from the beginning, preordained. And it's almost like when, when, when sometimes we give kids names, and, and I'm learning that if we look at the origin of the name, what it means. We can help our kids further themselves along faster and say, live out your name. Because like yesterday, we went somewhere and, and come to find out that, that uh, some relatives on the other side of the family, that they have two biblical names, and one guy didn't know what his name meant. One name was Israel, one was named Jeremiah. And one guy asked me, one of the young men asked me, what, what does Jeremiah mean? And I said, so you're calling yourself a prophet. Israel, a great nation. And what happens is that we can set people up to destiny when they're young. They don't have to figure it out early, later on in life. It can happen early. But guess what? We have to be showing them destiny through us. Without the compromise. See, 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 when you look at when you look at this boy David, like David was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Why was David without fear? This is why he was without fear. First of all, he was predestined for the battle. The next thing is God was with him. David wasn't by himself. David would have been chopped liver if he didn't have God with him. David probably would still be in the valley, not walking through it. Without God. That's right, without God. So, so what happens, he was predestined. And what happened is that what you got to understand is that David being a king, but without God, he still would have been stuck in the valley. Just because you have the name of kingship, you can't get there without God. Watch this. God's power is part of everything. Every Somebody shout everything. everything. God is so gracious, he gives us what we needed prematurely, ahead of time. We might tend to think this is materialistic, but what happens is that God is not limited in his supply. What we have to learn is that when we start looking at the destiny of God for our lives, if it's destroying you, it's not love. Let me say that again. If it's destroying you, it's not love. God is to build you, not to destroy you. So whatever it is, whomever it is, if it's destroying you, and I'm not saying but if it's destroying your if it's destroying your peace, your happiness, your joy, uh, peace at night, all that stuff, it's not love. If it's destroying your thought process, if it's destroying, if it has you making life decisions that's kind of hard, that was never hard before, that's not love. Come out from among that. Take a step back and let God tell you what, he, what you should be doing. God doesn't want to hold you back from your blessing. You hold your own self back. But you have been predestined not to be held back. Because what happens is that God says, here it is, 
right here before you. But here's the terms and the conditions, which is called the Word of God. What you do based upon the Word of God will unlock what I've already given. It's almost like having a whole storage unit with your blessings stored up in it, but you don't know the combination. You can't even access what's in your storage unit. When you receive God, God said, that's your storage unit right there. Everything pertaining to life and God before you was in that storage unit. He said, but the combination, you're going to have to figure out. He said, because I've given you a sequence on how to unlock it, but you keep putting in the wrong stuff. He says, I give you the word, but you're trying to mix the word and the world together to unlock the lock that I put on something that ain't going to happen. He says, the only way that you're going to be able to unlock what you, what's for you is to do it my way, my combination. He says, because the combination is in your destiny. You're in, you're out, you're up and you're down. You, 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 you don't know what's going on. He's like, you can't unlock anything like that. It's equivalent to, to this, tractor, this trailer up here where the doors are swung wide open, but you can't get in. You stopping yourself. All you can do is look at it. You're looking at that, but you haven't looked at his terms and conditions. Live properly. Don't compromise. Keep my decrees and my commandments that I've set up for you. Love one another. In spite of what it looked like. I told you to sow your time, your talent, and your treasure. He didn't say you get to pick which ones you want to use. He says all three. He says until you do what I've commanded, you ain't going to never be able to access that whole thing fully. Watch this. Although you may have some type of suffering, and sometimes we cause that. And what happens, I believe, Pastor L, that Jesus knew that we were going to go off course. And he, when he said that we all going to experience something. Because the Holy Spirit says you don't have to if you do it God's way. Everything that we have done or gone through Go back and look at the root of where it came from. Is either we caused it or we caused it. See, because what y'all probably want me to say was, I caused it or somebody else caused it for me. No. We caused it or we caused it. Because even if it was them, we allowed them to cause it in us. Ain't nobody make you go over there. Ain't nobody make you do that. Ain't nobody make you do anything outside the will of God. That was a choice we made. And we all have made choices based upon that went against the word of God at some point in time in our lives. And some still may be making them. But what happens, I'm trying to teach you, you're messing with your destiny. destiny. A, a, a woman goes through labor pains, but when the child is born, her pain is replaced with joy. Whatever you're feeling now, you should have to still realize that God has graced me for this, even though I caused it. He's equipped me for it, but I caused it. And when this is over, I'm going to understand that the joy of the Lord shall be my strength. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to wait till it's over. I'm going to shout now that the joy of the Lord is my strength because this is gonna, I'm going to need strength to get through it. I don't have to deal with it. I just want to get through it. It's just a valley right now. But God has promised me I'm going to walk through my valley. I'm not going to spend the night there. 
You only stay there because you have pity parties there. You have, been, you have not been destined to have pity parties. You have been predestined to have success and long life and longevity and the happiness of God because what God has called you to. Somebody shout, my destiny is on the way. Don't worry about persecution. They persecuted Jesus. But because of your faith, you will not give up in your destiny walk. Like you like the first step of the life, what can even separate you from the love of God? Nothing. Now watch this. This is what separation looks like. When something or someone gets you off course and God didn't call it. That's a separation. It's like what happens, what I learned with separation is, is that where you are a whole person right now, but when separation comes, something has drew, drew a line of the of, of division straight through you to separate you. They got you on one side of the kingdom over here, and one side of the world over here. How, how did that happen? What caused that? And what happens, you got to get back to your destiny to realize this should have never happened. I will allow it to happen. But this is not who I am. See, sometimes we put our nose in other people's businesses that cause the separation. Everybody ain't your problem. Everybody's not your assignment. You're still trying to work out your assignment. How are you going to work out somebody else's whole assignment? You haven't worked out 25% of your assignment. Okay, 50. But, but, but the thing is that if we focus on ourselves, we're going to find our destiny. See, see one thing that we're passing out, we've learned concerning each other and, 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 and all the years we've been married is that where I can't make her do anything. She can't make me do anything. I got to want God for myself. She got to want God for herself. But the thing is, since I want God for myself, with me being the man in my household, she's going to have to want God for herself. If she didn't want God for herself, she is flat out disobedient. Ain't to give me a second no excuse. I ain't said no excuse for her while she ain't trying to go after God like I'm going after God. Because that ain't even who I am. And what happens is that, watch this, the more and more that she saw me get into God, the more and more she started getting into God even more. So when I say stuff to her now about stuff that what God is depositing to me into the kingdom of God, she'll be like, oh yeah, I can see that all day. Uh, yeah, I, I can't wait till that happen. Because it's, it's, it's the representation that I give concerning the king. She ain't got to worry about that with me because the thing is, is that, and I know she's strong enough in the world, like, baby, baby, off a little bit right there. Just think about that. I ain't taking your chance. Just think about that. Because she has already resembled that she hears from God. Not from a fleshly standpoint. From God's perspective. If y'all don't know what it means to have a whole household of one or four concerning the kingdom of God, you don't even know what a real blessing looks like yet. I'm telling you what I live, not what I read. I know. It's like on, like on a quadrillion. You know? It's one today. Because what happens is that I had to go higher to put like, okay, what's this? I pulled her without even grabbing her. God, help me, Jesus. All she had to do was see what I was doing. She saw my destiny. She sees my destiny. Like, okay, let me get myself together. She was talking yesterday to somebody. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to say, no, you need to hold that because I'm going to need that for this next herb ministry where I'm going. But don't even let that out the bag yet. Just hold that. Because the sign is great. It's wider. It's larger than this. Watch this. 
Paul was convinced of these things. Why? Because God so loved. That's why he was convinced. And what happens, and then watch this contentment. Contentment is about having a good attitude about where you are while you're on your way to the next level. Don't look at where you are now when you're supposed to remain. But you've got to set yourself up for the next dimension in God. God has loved us from the very beginning of our lives, and that's why we should be so sold out for Him. Because guess what? He loved us even when others who say they love you walked away from you. And we still try to stay in relationship with them, but we keep breaking our relationship with God. And that's called a vow breaker. What happens is that when you begin to clear your, your destiny, uh, it's certain things you start learning along the way. That situation, you, you may have had some situations that may have broken your heart, but it opened your eyes. And when it opened your eyes, take that as a victory. Don't take it as a defeat, like, oh, Lord, I, I can't believe this happened. And you sitting around, got the lights turned off, you in the dark, pulling your thumbs, all that kind of stuff. No, no. Take that as a victory. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I messed that up, or that shouldn't have happened. No, your eyes was open to see where you're going. Not where you're supposed to remain. Here's another thing. Stop blaming your parents or your whoever for how you turned out. You grown now. Your mistakes are your own. Grow up. Watch this. No matter what your mom and them did not do, that still was not part of your destiny. That was based upon their lack of understanding for you. It burns, I said that. Because you gotta realize they only raised us based upon how they were raised, and that never meant they had understanding. So what happens is that you may be a little more in the things of God than they were. So you take that as a victory. And you capitalize off of that. To say, no, that's the thing that held my mom and them up. It won't hold me up. Because you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You're designed to overcome. You had to, you, you gonna have to come out. Why? Because you've been designed for greatness. I don't care how young you are, I don't care how old you are. I don't think that I don't care if you think, well, you know, I've been around this a long time. Let me go on and chill. No, you got time to chill, play. You still have work to do with the kingdom as long as it's crippling your body. We keep making these uh, lame excuses why we can't. But the truth of the matter is, is that you can pray about God for strength for everything else. Pray to God about getting out this stuff that you in. Like, God, show me my death. I'm tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of feeling like my body ain't healed. God, how I get out of this? Eat right. See, see the thing is, is that I don't want to look out there. I see y'all saying people say they want the best from God. But they wouldn't have put the work in to get the best. And then look at what you have. They say, oh, I want that. But don't, they don't know what it costs to get it. Because the Bible says count the cost. I'm not looking at y'all right now. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to get upset. Be, be comfortable where you are. 
and let God take you where he wants to take you for you. Everybody can't go where I'm going because of a different assignment on my life. But I ain't saying you still can't live your best like I'm living. See, your best life is not based upon tangible stuff. I'm trying to help y'all. Your best life is based upon what I've been destined for. And what happens is that, watch this, you know, you know, is that we have to get away from trying to look the part and start living the part. See, a lot of people want to look the part, but we have to, we have to realize we've been destined to, to live what we look like. Pastor who I watch all the time up, up in Ohio, up in Cleveland, Ohio, was watching the clip, clip of him the other day. He says, you know what happens, a lot of people are walking around looking like they got some money. He says, stop walking around looking like you got some money and have some. See, you can dress, we can dress up and still be unhappy under you. And you have not been destined to be unhappy. I, I just imagine Jesus, if, if, if Jesus was a Jonah on his way to the cross, he'd be like, ha, ha, y'all thought, thought that was going to hurt me. I'm still going to finish my mission. And I just see Jesus Jonah with everybody. I'm like, did he just insult me? He said, yeah, because you insult me by throwing, stuff, throwing rocks at me and making me carry this wood. Y'all still forgot I'm going to win. But, but he wasn't a Jonah, he was a, he was a God of love and he still was trying to get people to the kingdom of God while he was still hanging on the throne. Watch this. I, I'm going to help with your destiny because some of y'all need to be built up right now. You're not just another person, says the Lord. You are the love of my life. You're just not another person. We are the love of his life. That means we've been, we are covered by him. So here it is, God loved me so much. He protected me from the arrows by day and the snares by night. In other words, whatever was going to come, I've been covered. This is what we got to understand. It's not just enough to know the name of Jesus. You've got to learn how to call on it. Let me say that one more again. It's not just enough to call on the name of Jesus. You gotta know it. You gotta know his name. You gotta live his name. You gotta watch this. Believe in his name. You know, every time when we was going, when we needed something like Jesus, we need you. We don't know how this is gonna work out. See, this is what I learned, Pastor Elder, and, 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 and you and you taught this to me some years ago. Jesus is the greatest gift you can ever have. So look like you got it. You walking down with your head hung down. And he ain't down there. <laughs> Rejoicing who he is. Look, let me tell you something. I've learned through Holy Spirit, through prayer, through the Word, spiritual agreement through my wife. Christ is the only one that's going to give you the peace that you keep missing. No 1-800 numbers. 
no psychic line, no tarot cards, Jesus. And what happens is that a lot of us have substituted Jesus for our own sinful desires. Watch this. If anybody, this is the Bible, if anybody be in Christ, he's a new creature. So guess what? Whatever you have that's old, I get in him, I'm new, the old goes away. So guess what? I don't, so, so I don't care if you say you was born that way, get born again. Because when you get born again, in his lifestyle, certain things just ain't gonna be accepted. I don't care what the government say, they ain't God. And what happens is that I don't even know how, this is how I know that you're really not connected, you don't know the word. How do we get to dummy down what God has already seen? How do we get to redefine what he's already defined? That's like us trying to rewrite Webster. Amen. And I'm telling you the truth because if you're so down for God and God word really take, it'll make you change. You know when that perm really take, you come out looking like a whole different system. You went in curling, napping, all that stuff that came out, you looking all straight, so like you got a uh, blazing hair now. Because that perm took. And if you allow that perm to take, of the Holy Ghost taking your life, you'll get straight. Because you sit there long that thing gonna start burning. You were like, Jeremiah, this thing like fire. Shut up in my scalp. If you let it take, what happens is that some people are washing out prematurely. As soon as you feel the sting of the word, rinse it out, rinse it out, rinse it out. I can't take it no more. Rinse it out, rinse it out. I can't take it no more. You like this. Say, no, come on. I ain't even taking no more five minutes. Take it, take it out. So what happens, God says, whosoever will. He's a free will God. He lets you rinse prematurely. And what happens, you trying to figure out, you look straight from afar off. But a week later, everything began to kick back up. The real you. That demonic you begin to show back up. Outside the will of God begin to show back up. Now you're messing with your destiny. I just need some of y'all who don't mind letting that Holy Ghost burn, burn you until you straighten out the way God
Because you got to understand, you're getting the kingdom of God. Watch this. I just saw Sister Glory out of my peripheral. Is that as long as you straighten out for God, God says, now what I'm going to do is, your, watch this, your spiritual head doing going to look like everybody else. He said, guess what? I'm going to cut you to where you're going to have your own style, but people are going to be able to recognize who you are. So some of y'all gonna have talks, you gonna have bobs, you gonna have eight possessions, you gonna have these things because I want you to be real in him. Watch this. So, so I told you you gotta be, you gotta realize that you've been graced to love the unlovable. So even if your kids go astray, you say, you know what? I taught them right. I raised them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. They'll come back. And then you lay down at night and have sweet sleep. Come on, talk to me. Your husband tripping. Say, yeah, I don't know what happened. But I know his mom and them raised him in the fear and admonition of the Lord. He got to come back. Your wife tripping. Say, hey, you know better. You know the word. You got to come back. They'll come back. Why? Because they've been predestined. God foreknew them. And what happens, we got to stop taking this word predestined lightly. It means preordained. That means God set us up from the foundation to work for him. He gave us a job description before your first job gave you a description. So, they know you know too much to stay away. So what happens is that no matter this is for the parents right here. No matter how much your kids uh, go outside of your instruction, you need to look at them every day. They come in the house in the face and say, "You man of God, you." In spite, despite what you see. You can change the narrative. God help me, Jesus. He can come in the house high. It's Cootie Brown, and I ain't figured out who Cootie is yet. But you look at him and say, you man of God, you. She can come in the house, and she been out there high, or even throwing it back. But you look her in the face and say, you woman of God, you. Until the narrative changes. Because you are believing and you are sowing into their destiny. And I don't care how a school here went. Because this pandemic has messed some kids up concerning grades. But you don't let the pandemic define who they really are. You look them in the face and say, you smart individual, you. You will do better on next year. Why? Because you have been destined for greatness. We're not going to let a pandemic define what God already said. Hallelujah. Why? Because they've been predestined from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. So what happens? God foreknew you. He gave you an assignment. When you received Jesus, he gave you the blueprint called the Word of God. What you got to start doing now is learn how to read the blueprint. But what I come to find out is that when people learn how to read blueprints, they go to school. Well, welcome to Sunday school. We had Wednesday school to learn how to read the blueprint from your life. And watch this. You can't learn the blueprint from going to school once a week. 
what happens um, when, when I was teaching, if you had seven days unexcused, it was an automatic failure. I don't care how much work you turn in. And I was the type of teacher, I wasn't giving no makeup work. Because why I got to give you makeup work? Because you decided to stay home. You could go, they used to go to the prison on me all the time. All the time. Mr. Vance will not give us any makeup work. I'm like, look, Mr. Prussell. A cord is like six and a half weeks. They already missed 21 days. I'm not correcting the work on 21 days. That, that ain't gonna happen. Well, can't you give them some projects or something? That means I gotta go home now, take time from her to figure out what to give them because they miss, ain't gonna happen, Captain. Watch this. Furthermore, it's not even in my contract, according to my unit. Why I gotta give you makeup work in the kingdom? It's not in my contract, according to the unit. Because what happens is that there is a time of instruction. That's called instruction time. Like, like when kids go to college, and all y'all that go on the car, go on the car, you gotta be busy. Because guess what? Your mom ain't gonna come wake you up when, it's, when the alarm clock goes tomorrow, get up and go to class. Professors ain't calling you. Matter of fact, the crazy thing is that kids go to college, you pay the tuition, and you don't even have the right to the grade. Ain't that something? I'm like, well, look, you're going to give me something. <laughs> yeah, the kids got to give you permission to access the grade. <laughs> what? <laughs> but what happens, the kids are so smart when they go to college, they learn systems. <laughs> and the system they learn is that where, what class I want to take early, don't take my class, that's too early. You, you hung out the night before, you, you may not make that class. You want to put everything like, like right in the middle. So you can go to class, finish in enough time after class, go take a nap after class so you can party that night. And as a while, you start learning professors. Well, if I know if I miss this class, I got like four times of this. I got to stretch them out over this, this semester. So when I go home this weekend and my parents don't know I'm home, I can miss this class on Monday. I'm just saying, not y'all kids, I'm just saying. But guess what? Because of your destiny in God, you shouldn't want to miss class. Because that's what you've been instructed on how to get to the next level in God. You can't make it without him. And I'm not saying that you have perfected everything. I want you to move beyond the T word. We're going to say the T word. That means try. And we're going to become the D word, doom. Because trying will delay, doing will accelerate. Amen. Trying will delay, doing will accelerate. And what happens, you have to learn how to do without having fear. Because fear don't come from God. It comes from Satan. And the Bible says he's already been defeated under our feet. The only way that he gets up is when we start walking in fear. And we let him up back into our lives and we mess with our destiny. Come on, put your blessed hands together and thank God for being. Somebody shout destiny!
going there. The 4th of July, that's what it is, this is the 4th of July. Like, like my friends say, Kim T, the fight is the 5th of July. But if you're sitting there home, you watch this, this worship experience of today. Hallelujah. And you're not safe. You're not sure that your name will remain in the land of the life. But that's you want for I need to bless the right man so I can make sure that your name is written into the land of the life. Hallelujah. You're in the parking lot. You're not saved. You need to be saved right now. Come on. Raise your hands. Let's get, let's get this right with God on today. I'm trying to show you how to get to your destiny. Your problem is for you. You can deal with them when you find out your destiny. Amen. And that problem really ain't that big. And the reason why, like Pastor, you may understand, uh, it, it is kind of big. Well, uh, it may not be because I maximize God and minimize the problem. Because it's my destiny. My second appeal is when you're in the back city state, you walked away from the things of God. And that's, that's you I'm talking to. Come on. Let's get it right with God on today. Let's rededicate to that. I don't even know why you think you're back state. That's between you and the spirit of the living God. But at least be honest enough to admit, that, you know, to admit, yeah, I got off the floor. And that's where I'm at. Let's be honest on today. Hallelujah. My fourth and my final appeal. If you're here today, you've been born of the Spirit. You're watching you in the park. Like you've been born of the Spirit, but not feel the Spirit of God. Be able to pray in the heavenly language. If that's you I'm talking to, come on. Talk to me. Let's get filled with Holy Spirit. You're in the park and I raise your hand. If, you, if you're sitting at home, message us right now. I want to make sure you get right with Holy Spirit on today. Hallelujah. My fourth and final appeal. You're here today. And you're watching. You're viewing. By way of Holy Spirit that's spoken to you. That you don't need a church. You need a pastor. It's a difference. A lot of people pledge allegiance to the church. But you've never been pastor. Someone who can teach you the word of God with simplicity and clarity and anointing the bones that your life will be forever changed. I want to make sure that your life is right. I can help you get to your destiny. You need a man of God. You need a woman of God to share with you the word of God so you can get right without being in fear. Fear should not live in you. Because it don't come from God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, come on, put your blessed hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, put your hands together. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to return what belongs to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just return what belongs to the kingdom of God. Amen. And with it being first Sunday, it's also communion Sunday. Hallelujah. So if you have not received communion, raise your hand. Get that signal. If you have not received your communion.
right? I can't tell you yet, tell you yet. Just make sure that, that you see it. Amen. Well, come on, let's pray if you want to take it. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name, for this day that you made me thank you. Regardless of what we think we can feel, we can be in your word. And Lord, you said even between a man and a man, we can suffer. Examine ourselves. So Father, I thank you in advance that we have been made to be by the blood of the crucified lamb. By way of the Holy Spirit, which is our teacher and our guide. So, Father, we thank you right now that the elements of the table are, are blessed. It will cause a supernatural change in our lives because we are partaking of the faith. So, Father, we believe and receive that we count it all joy in Jesus' name. Amen. took some bread without yeast and did not rise and broke it. He says, this bread will represent my broken body, which will be broken for you. And as often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me until I return. Let us eat together as they do. Did the body of Christ say amen? In the same hour, he took the cup of the fifth of fruit divine. They're representing his shed blood for the remission of sin, the new cup. And he took the cup, he blessed it. And I'm reminded that his blood was, was an outpouring for us. Jesus was predestined to die, but also live. Everything he died for, we've been delivered from. While Jesus is hanging there on the cross, he's still in the ministry. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And today, you should be me a paradise. As he took the cup and he blessed them, him and the disciples drink together. Let's drink together as they did. By the Christ say amen. The Bible declares that there was no benediction. They went out into the Mount of Olives singing and rejoicing in the Lord. But we are dismissed in Jesus' name.